I like it. I like it a lot. Everybody's got Welcome back to another Geekawatt video and today I'm going to be looking at this motherboard. This is the Gigabyte G1 Gaming 990X AM3 Plus motherboard. So this motherboard from Gigabyte uh, basically aims to remedy the issues and, and the, the drawbacks, shall we say, associated with the AM3 Plus socket. Now I know what you're thinking, James, why would Gigabyte release a new motherboard on the G1 Gaming uh, line, which is the highest end gaming line of motherboards, uh, on the AM3 Plus socket when we've got Broadwally, KB Lake and especially Zen for AMD just around the corner on the horizon. Now basically the AMD FX uh, chipset, the, the, the 990X, 990FX chipset provide the best value. No one can deny that performance you get out of something like an 8350 or an 8370 for the price in certain applications such as rendering, streaming and video editing is unparalleled. You can't find that anywhere else. And you've got a lot of people, a lot of people that are true to AMD, that love AMD hardware. And I, I love AMD hardware, but I also love Intel and Nvidia hardware. But some people will be true to AMD. Some people will only want to use AMD hardware in the board and in, in their system. And that's understandable. So this board, what it basically does is, it basically goes, all right, so you've got the AM3 Plus chipset, but you want the fancy features that you find on the Z170 chipset. You want the fancy features found on X99. And this, bo this board sort of adds them on. So let's take a really quick physical overview. Across the bottom we've got a HD audio uh, connector. We've also got our three USB 2.0 headers. A USB 3 header which is blacked out. Finally, so it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. Front panel connectors, I'm going to get more onto that in just a moment's time. If you flip around to the side, we've got six SATA 3, 6 gigabit per second ports. We've also got a system fan header, our 20 plus 4 pin motherboard power connector, uh, a 3 pin uh, PW, P, PWR fan header, sorry. We've also got our, uh, our G1 Gaming logo as well down the side, which I'm going to get to in a moment because that does something quite special. And we've also got our RAM DIMM slots just up the top here uh, for up to dual channel uh, memory performance and I believe up to uh, 32 or 64 gigabytes. If we go up to the top we can see we've got another fan header. This time it's a 4 pin CPU fan header. And then if we he head around to the I.O. that's where things start to get quite special and very, very interesting. So let's start off with the PS2 port. Now many people still don't understand why people and tech YouTubers love having a PS2 combo port. My keyboard's a mechanical keyboard. It is the Qpad MK50, and now this is used by eSports players all around the world. They love Qpad keyboards, and it basically, natively, it runs off a PS2 connector, meaning the input lag is super low, whereas USB is designed to handle so many peripherals that the impact input lag is significantly higher. Above that, we've got two yellow USB, USB ports, and you're thinking, James, why, why are they yellow? This is for USB amps and DAC, so it gets rid of all that noise interference uh, commonly associated. I'm going to get onto the audio in just a moment's time, but it just gets rid of that interference. So if you had something like a Scarlett 2i2, you would plug it into there. Next, we've got two USB 2.0 ports, two red ports. I'm going to get onto those in a moment. Two USB 3.0 ports, another two USB 2 ports with an Intel Gigabit NIC. Ironic, and I know, and we've also got our 7.1 audio with optical audio out on this block here. So what about these two red ports? Now this is the first thing that this motherboard aims to uh, sort of fix and remedy, if you will, from typical uh, drawbacks of the AM3 Plus socket. USB 3.1. Now this is USB 3.1 Type A, not Type C. However, you can just get an adapter. You get up to 10 gigabits of bandwidth through this, which is insane. This is the brand new sort of Thunderbolt standard. Well, it is Thunderbolt if uh, if you if you know what Thunderbolt is, which is should. Um, so yeah, that is the first issue it aims to fix. We've got some AM3 Plus motherboards with no USB 3 ports, and here we are throwing out a uh, USB 2 ports. 5 gigabit USB 3 ports and 10 gigabit USB 3.1 ports. So that's the first issue that this motherboard aims to solve. The next issue comes down to the PCIe lanes. Now, at the bottom, we've got two very, very uninteresting PCI legacy lanes that I'm not going to use and you're probably never going to use. So let's just go past them. Next, above that, we have got two PCI Express X16 Gen three slots which are reinforced in a singular piece of stainless steel. Now this uh, in some scenarios makes this 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 lane this socket if you will 3.2 times stronger. It tries to prevent GPU sag and if you've got a really heavy GPU that's tugging down you're not going to have too many issues because it's metal and it's reinforced. 
And in between those PCIe lanes, aside from the PCIe 1X uh, Gen 3 slot, we have got an M.2 slot, a 20 gigabit per second. So we've gone from we've gone from 200 megabit 200 megabits per second to a gigabit per second to 10 gigabits per second to 20 gigabits per second of bandwidth through the M.2 slot. We've got uh, the three different lengths that you would come to expect, 42, F60, F and ATF for connecting and screwing down those different lengths of M.2 SSD. So if you want super snappy performance, oh boy, oh boy, you have got it. So now we've talked about the things that this motherboard fixes and the good things, but let's talk about a couple of things that I really liked and then we'll go into the pros, cons and all that good stuff. So if we look down the side, you can see we've got uh, uh, our audio lane. Now this is isolated. We get Realtek HD uh, audio through uh, the Realtek HD audio codec through this. And this isolated lane actually lights up red, as you can see in the B-roll now. Now that basically isolates the audio from the rest of the motherboard to try and reduce uh, analog interference. Because audio is an analog signal and analog can be messed with quite a lot. Yes, once it goes into your computer, it does get turned into a digital signal. We know that. However, this motherboard aims to solve the analog interference because if you have analog interference at the beginning, that analog interference gets converted to digital and then when that digital gets converted back to analog to come through your ears, you're going to you're going to still have that that horrible that horrible interference. So this motherboard aims to remedy that problem and I can tell you it does a great job. You've got the gold capacitors here, the audio capacitors as well uh, by the by the audio lane. If we look at the G1 gaming logo, that also lights up red. So if you've got a lovely black and red color scheme to fit in with uh, the AMD colors, then this board is literally the best option. So when should you go for this and when should you go for the 990FX? Now this board supports two ASLI, uh, but the 990FX has three of these lanes meaning even more uh, peripherals and if you didn't know it's actually the motherboard that puts the PCIe lanes on in the AMD uh, in the AMD chipset as opposed to uh, the CPU providing the PCIe lanes so if you want more go up to the 990FX but this board by god is it good I would love some slightly bigger heat sinks however if you do want better heat sinks for better cooling of like the VRMs and better overclocking then you do want to go up to the 990FX you can overclock and I did do a little bit of overclocking on this board and the AMD chips are great overclockers but if you really want to push those overclocks get the 990FX if you want a third GPU get the 990FX but for most this motherboard is insane. It fixes all the issues that I hated about the AM3 Plus socket recently on my Sabertooth board from ASUS on the 990FX chipset. This board is absolutely insane. If you'd like to see my review of this, the AMD Wraith Cooler, and you'd like to see my video on the DirectX 12 performance of the 8350, then go and check those out on the channel as well. They'll be up just after the release of this video. Not to mention a couple of the other accessories before we finish off. We get some uh, an SLI bridge. Crossfire doesn't need a bridge anymore. We also get uh, a lovely front panel connector to allow us to easily connect those up uh, without faffing around with little fingers and stuff like that. And we also get a door hanger. So your parents stay away when you're gaming. I know the struggle, I know the struggle. This board is insane, it gets a superb 4 out of 5 stars for me. I would love some better overclocking performance and no product yet has received my 5 star rating. So for me, this board is exceptional. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like rating and to subscribe. And as always, we will see you in the next Geek or What video.